Many people believe this prosecution is politically motivated. The words of Julian Assange's lawyer to a media circus outside a London magistrate's court this afternoon after the founder of WikiLeaks was refused bail and remanded in custody. But the Swedish prosecutor seeking to extradite Mr. Assange for alleged sexual offences strongly denied the case had anything to do with the WikiLeaks website, which continues to publish United States diplomatic cables. At the same time, the US State Department says it could yet try to extradite Mr. Assange himself, itself. A warning, there is flash photography in this report from Jonathan Rugman. The shutters of a Westminster courthouse closed this afternoon and one of America's most wanted men disappeared inside. Julian Assange had handed himself in to police in North London this morning and was immediately arrested after a Swedish warrant was issued accusing him of rape and assault. The world's media was waiting for Mr Assange's first public appearance since he began releasing over a quarter of a million American diplomatic cables just over a week ago. One of his lawyers was dressed in a skull and crossbones tie as his client, the chief pirate of the internet, faced his first day in a British court. No, we're just going into uh, the court. Uh, we hope to see the warrant shortly. And uh, we'll have a decision after that as to what we're going to do. How is your client at the moment? He's fine. He's in good, good spirits. Assange's lawyers told me they were confident bail would be granted, but upstairs in court number one, a judge had different ideas. The WikiLeaks founder looked pale and tired, waving briefly when he walked in and smiling when he gave an Australian postal box as his address. The magistrate, Howard Riddle, was told there were no previous convictions, that journalist John Pilger and film director Ken Loach were among those posting bail. But the court heard that Mr Assange had not agreed to be fingerprinted or photographed voluntarily this morning and that he was wanted for alleged rape. The court heard four allegations of sexual offences against two women over four days this summer. The prosecution outlined a charge of unlawful coercion and another of deliberate molestation in Stockholm on the night of August the 14th. And a charge of rape on August the 17th when Mr Assange allegedly exploited the fact that the woman was asleep. And finally, another charge of deliberate molestation on August the 18th when Mr Assange allegedly exposed himself. Bail was dismissed and another hearing was set for next week. As Mr Assange left in a police van, the press pack were denied even a glimpse. To his critics, he's a threat to American national security. And to his supporters now, he's a martyr for freedom of speech. People are banging on the windows of Mr Assange's truck as he's taken off into police custody. They're saying he's a political prisoner. Extraordinary scenes here outside Westminster Magistrates Court. And the irony is that he's not being prosecuted in terms of leaking thousands of classified American documents, but allegedly for sexual assault committed in Sweden in August. Mr Assange's legal team had told the court that the WikiLeaks founder had handed his passport to the police and would not have fled the country. The legal response, another application for bail. This is going to go viral. Many people will come forward to stand as sureties for Mr. Assange. Many people believe Mr. Assange to be innocent, myself included. And many people believe that this uh, prosecution is politically motivated. Ken Loach had guaranteed £20,000 worth of bail, telling the court he didn't know Assange, but that the public had a right to know the dealings of governments. It's a public duty and um, they're obviously out to get him. Another supporter, Jemima Khan, offered to guarantee another £20,000. She said she didn't know Assange either, but that was not the point. Um, I'm here because I believe this is about the principle of the universal right of freedom of information. While John Pilger, offering another 20,000, told the court the sex charges were absurd and that he held his fellow Australian in high regard. He's an innocent man until proven guilty. Uh, and there's no evidence, strong evidence, to uh, keep him in prison, I don't believe. At first, it sounded as if the magistrate in this case might release Mr Assange after £180,000 worth of bail was on offer. But clearly, the judge decided that Mr Assange was a flight risk and that even though he had surrendered himself to the police this morning, he should be kept behind bars.
If this is a US-backed conspiracy to capture the WikiLeaks founder, it has worked tonight. But the lawyer for his female accusers in Sweden says these are not trumped-up charges, that his clients have been traumatized by what Mr. Assange is alleged to have done. Well, they have been very upset uh, because they have been uh, accused of having made uh, some sort of conspiracy, etc. And, and uh, I mean, it was a trauma f in the first place when it all happened, and then it's another trauma to be suspected of an, uh, well, a false allegation. Mr. Assange's lawyers counter that another Swedish prosecutor had previously dropped the case against him for lack of evidence. And just over a week after Assange started leaking America's diplomatic secrets, it's very personal allegations which have put him behind bars in Wandsworth Prison tonight. Jonathan Rugman reporting. Well, in a moment, we'll be speaking to Mark Stevens, Julian Assange's lawyer. But first, some reaction from the U.S., where senior figures in the administration have been expressing their satisfaction at his arrest. Defense Secretary Robert Gates welcoming it as good news, while a State Department official refused to rule out an American extradition bid and said they were investigating a crime under U.S. law. Uh, I hadn't heard that, but uh, that sounds like good news to me. Well, um, our investigation uh, is ongoing, uh, and beyond that, uh, uh, as to his arrest, uh, this is at this point an issue between Britain and Sweden. Well, uh, uh, the, the lawyer of uh, Julian Assange is with us now, Mark Stevens. Um, Mark Stevens, how much notice did you have of today's case? Uh, about 15 hours. I was called after close of business last night, uh, and uh, I was asked uh, to arrange a meeting uh, today, this morning, at uh, 9 o'clock at uh, a police station in London, uh, and uh, also to obviously arrange uh, sureties and everything else in that short period of time. Now, he's in Wandsworth Jail tonight. You talked uh, on the steps of the court of, of appealing the bail decision. Uh, when can you do that? Well, we can do it uh, at any point. Uh, uh, the most logical time would probably be at the time of the next hearing. Uh, we can either do that or we can make an appeal to the, to the High Court. Uh, obviously, I'm very conscious that uh, Julian um, is spending a night in jail, an innocent man in jail. It must be very difficult for him. But, uh, of course, um, today we learned for the very first time uh, information about the allegations uh, that are being made from Sweden about him. Have you uh, seen the full charges? No, we haven't said there are no charges, still no charges. He's only wanted for questioning. And we still haven't seen the allegations. And we were very, very grateful to uh, District Judge Howard Riddle today because I think he has uh, asked the uh, prosecutor to share with us the information that uh, constitutes the evidence for these because he wants, I think, at the next hearing to hear representations from both sides as to the strength of that evidence and whether... Uh, I think there's a likelihood of conviction will weigh very heavily in his next hearing of the case. But isn't this a European warrant and therefore not really challengeable? I mean, it, it's basically there, isn't it? That's it. Well, a, a lot of people say that European warrants are not challengeable. In fact, they are. Uh, I mean, the process has been so fundamentally flawed in Sweden uh, that you can challenge them. And indeed, he, there are a number of steps which the Swedes haven't been through, even through this formal process. Uh, and uh, we still don't know what the allegations are. He's only wanted for questioning. There is a real doubt as to whether you can get a European arrest warrant merely for questioning. What's the first point at which you'll be allowed to speak to him? Well, uh, I've, this afternoon, had my office contact uh, as I was standing on the steps. Just before I came out, I made a, uh, a call uh, to the office and asked them to set up a meeting uh, at Wandsworth Prison. And the first date that they have offered me is the 13th of December. That is the very next day I'm supposed to go to court again uh, with a similarly very short period of notice, which is really impossible to prepare mm. a case. Uh, I did the best I could today with right. uh, producing but, individuals. But you, you talked on the steps of politically motivated, is it? Yeah, I think it is. I think uh, there are darker forces. That we, you, when you get to a darker point... Darker forces? What are they? Well, I think you only get to a point where you can no longer explain a prosecutor's behaviour rationally. There's no rational explanation. Uh, then in those circumstances, you have to look... But there uh, are two women making very serious sexual allegations. 
the, those women made those allegations back in August. The most senior prosecutor in the whole of Sweden looked at it and said, and she said, there is not a shred of evidence here which warrants an investigation. Then a politician, that lawyer that we had is also a politician, he got involved with these women and took them off to another prosecutor in Gothenburg. At that point, this all started up again and at the end of the day, we're now seeing these uh, warrants coming out suspiciously closely in time uh, to the uh, uh, date of the release of the cables. But, but where is the dark force? I mean, is it frankly the United States? I think it's a combination. The uh, uh, United States is clearly making perhaps the most uh, outrageous and bellicose statements, but I think that uh, Russia and China are, are unhappy as well. Uh, and there are a number of other states who will be equally happy to see uh, Julian Assange behind bars. And but when of course, you say with this WikiLeaks go, today, yeah. today, we'll keep, keep publishing. Well, and when you say this will go viral, um, what do you mean by that? Well, I think that what's going to happen is I think people have understood for the very first time that there is something wrong here. It's not in the state of Denmark, it's in the state of Sweden. And I think people are starting to stand up and be counted. We saw five very brave and honourable people stand up today to be sure it is for him. Four of them didn't know who he was, uh, but were prepared to do so because they believed in his innocence, believed this to be wrong. And I think they are but the tip of an iceberg, and I do believe this will go viral. But uh, a number of people would say, um, look, for goodness sake, if he's innocent, why doesn't he just go to Sweden and clear his name? Well, the, the position we're in at the moment is that the Swedish prosecutor can, if she really does want to interview Julian Assange, and bear in mind, we have been trying to meet her since August of this year, but if she well, really... not wants, in Sweden. Not in Sweden. Well, yes, for 40 days and 40 nights in Sweden, uh, but if she really well, wants to see... Well, if he's innocent, I mean, he can just go to Sweden and do it. If she wants to meet him, she can. The concern now is that there's some other force at play, and that other force is we've put in mind of the fact, certainly I am, uh, that uh, Sweden was one of those lickspittle states which allowed uh, for extraordinary rendition and torture flights to, you, to go through their, through their country. And that usually we think of them being as being a liberal state. On that particular issue, they were very illiberal. Mark Stevens, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.